This conference will now be recorded. So we'll be starting our next topic that is uh, factors influencing the MRP. Okay, so the topics that we are going to cover enough. We will see the importance of lot size. Different lot size procedures. Okay, additional lot size influences. Okay, then we will understand importance of maximum lot size and minimum lot size. Then we'll discuss safety stock, safety stock, and the various types of scraps like assembly scrap, component scrap, operation scrap. Those things we will discuss. Okay. So first we'll start with the a large size procedures. Okay. So normally when you run MRP, system uh, takes the large size procedure maintained in the metal master. You can define how the procurement quantities are calculated by selecting the large size procedure when maintaining the metal master record. Okay, so this large size procedure, whatever you maintain, that will uh, have an impact on the MRP basically. Okay, the result of the large size calculation is the quantity to be produced or procured, which you can change and display in the order proposal. Okay, so basically this lot size calculation will decide how much quantity is to be produced or procured. Okay, there are three groups of lot sizing procedures. Okay, static, periodical and optimizing. Okay, we will discuss static and periodic. We will discuss, okay, optimizing. Uh, we cannot show it in the system. I cannot show it in the system. You need some real time data. But I will share you some documents with you can go through those documents. Okay. Apart from this, you can also enter restrictions in the metal master that the system is to take into account when forming the lot sizes. That is minimum lot size and maximum lot size. Okay. So we, I'll show you this also how this minimum lot size and maximum lot size will work. Okay. So basically, this lot sizing procedure is maintained in the material master okay it is entered in the material master in the mrp2 mrp1 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 okay so we have three types of lot sizing procedures as i just explained static periodic and optimum procedures we will discuss static and periodic ones okay so First, let me show you the uh, lot size procedure in the system. Okay. Okay. So, if you take our material. This is a product we are talking about, Pepsi one liter bottle. Okay, if you take this, okay, to see the lot size procedure, you need to go to material master, MM03. Okay, enter the material code, enter. You need to go to MRP view, MRP one view. Okay, if you continue, plant is 1710, cutting. Here you see. There is a large size procedure meeting. Just give me one minute. Huh? A lot of background noise is coming. Just give me one.
okay so this is the place where you maintain the lot sizing procedures okay you see here lot sizing procedure ex so we have some lot sizing procedures we will discuss this we will discuss the important ones okay we will discuss this okay so so we have uh, so first we'll start with the static lot sizing procedures okay so when planning when planning using lot for lot order quantity the system uses the exact shortage quantity as the order quantity in case of a material shortage so if you use ex ex that means in the static lot sizing procedures we have three ex lot for lot order quantity fx fixed lot size and hb replenish up to maximum stock level okay so first we'll discuss on the ex lot for lot that means your system will create the planned order quantity or purchase, uh, purchase requisition quantity exact to the requirement suppose let's say your requirement is 50 then it will create planned order exactly to 50. let's say your requirement is 100 then it will create planned order for 100. Let's say your requirement is 70. It will create exactly to the 70. Exact, lot for lot, lot for lot. If you use EX, lot for lot order quantity. Okay, so uh, let me show you this. So now already it is maintained, EX, lot for lot order. Okay, so now, Okay, so for this material, I will enter some requirements. Let's go to MD04. Okay, as of now, nothing is here. We don't have any stock, no requirements, nothing is here. Already, the what is the planning strategy? 10. Okay, so now I will enter the requirements. Okay, MD61. Okay enter one month they will enter 100 second month 150 third month 200 next month 250 250 okay and another month let's say 300 i'm entering the forecast now i'm saving it saved it now you can see the your uh, forecast on the md04 screen this is what i enter month wise forecast now if i run mrp you see how system will be here i'm just running mrp md02 okay i'm running MRP. yesterday we already discussed all these things huh? these mrp control parameters process control parameters already we discussed yesterday okay so now i'm just running mrp mrp is executed so now if you go to stock requirement list if i refresh the screen what do you observe what is the planned order quantity in the month of november the requirement is 100 planned order quantity is 100 in the month of uh, december the requirement is 150 and the planned order quantity is 150. so exact to the requirement why the reason is we are using lot for lot for lot lot size ex we are using ex okay so you are your receipt element quantity is exact to the requirement quantity. That's what you need to understand. Okay. Now we will discuss about the fixed lot size. Fixed lot size, I'll show. You. Let us go and change the lot size to fixed lot size. Go to MM02. Go to MRP1 view. Plant is 1710. Here you have a EX. Now we will change it to FX. Here you see there is a one called FX fixed order quantity if i use fx the moment i'm trying to use fx if i enter what system says this the lot sizing procedure requires a fixed lot size it is asking you to enter this fixed lot size now let me enter one i'm entering 150 now you see the difference i say i enter i entered 150 that means the meaning is always we produce only 150 Okay, not less than 150, not more than 150. Okay, suppose I'll tell you the scenario. 